what's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. Don't forget to check out my website, ckwrapstoronto.com. I'll put a link up in the top corner for you. Now, today I'm rewrapping the Lamborghini Huracan that was wrapped in the bowl print. I'll put a link to the video there as well. You can have a look at that one uh, if you haven't seen it before. But we're wrapping it into something a bit more unique this time. We're doing a textured finish, but this is a custom textured finish. So this is a, this is a brushed metal finish with satin pearl white underneath it. So we're, we've taken brushed metal laminate and laminated satin pearl white. Put it as simple as possible. Now, there's a bit of a difficult part when it comes to installing this is we don't want to overstretch the brushed because it will distort the film and it'll look terrible. On top of that, we want to run this directionally, as directionally as possible. As you can see here, I have a small piece laid out on the actual bumper because when we wrap a bumper, and it meets the hood, similar to the fashion of this one, it's not gonna line up. So it's not gonna line up because we're gonna have to choose which way we're gonna run our hood. Now this hood is just a little over 60 inches. I can run the hood in the same direction without a seam as the rest of the vehicle, other than the bumper. Now as we stretch the, as we cut into the roll lengthwise, the grain on the bumper is gonna run across and it's gonna meet the hood and the grain on the hood is gonna run streamlined with the rest of the car. Do you want to turn the hood so that it meets the bumper or do you want to have the hood match the fender? I mean, that's totally up to you because one way or the other, it's not going to match. What I've done here is I've done a, a sample piece, a test piece basically to see what the seam looks like. The seam actually looks extremely terrible and the body line that's right here isn't really strong enough to hide this seam better than I thought, it, you know, I actually kind of thought it was going to be this way. So this, this body line isn't predominant enough to actually hide this seam better. So we're, we're kind of stuck with this and how it's gonna look. On top of that, when you start layering up white and satin, satin white and satin pearl white, it does never ever looks good. The seams never look good. So it's just, it's just the nature of the beast, guys. So I'm gonna end up wrapping this bumper and stretching the film across and it, I'm gonna have to have it meet this fender over here at some point, which it will, I have no problem with that. Again, we're not going to have it matching right here in the middle. Today, I'm going to be wrapping the hood as the first panel. Get it out of the way. It's the piece that's a little bit larger than 60 inches, and I want to run it streamlined with no seams. We're about, I want to say, half to three quarters of an inch shy on each end. Not a whole lot. If we take the film and we heat it and stretch it out over a larger area, we'll be totally fine. Now, I'm going to grab my isopropyl alcohol. I've measured the actual piece itself. And I'm gonna leave this here just so you can see what, the, what it's gonna look like when I bring the camera in. Let's wipe this bad boy down. 70% isopropyl alcohol. Get it from anywhere almost. Or you can get it in the description below. I'll put a link there for you and the products that I'm using today. We want to make sure that we wipe off the other panel. The car's clean. And I don't want to soak the panel. We just want to give it a nice little mist. Make sure that we've got everything off. This hood was previously wrapped. I think I feel a little bit of adhesive from what was there before. Just checking it out. Or it's just a pain in perfection. Let's see, hold on. It's just a rough spot. I want to get under that edge. Even though it's already clean, not a big deal. We we'll just do it again. We always double check, triple check, make sure our panel is as clean as possible. I think we're looking good. Perfect. All right, let's cut our piece out. Now I measured it being just a little over 60 inches in width. Let's measure the length. Length, we're gonna come up past the top corner, come down somewhere around here, we're looking at about 43, 44. Perfect, let's roll it off the wall. I got it right over here. 
Now there are no magnets used on this vehicle, so it's composite, aluminum, makes things a little bit more challenging. It's still longer. 43, 44 comes right around here. There we go. What's interesting about this film is it's high friction. So when you're squeegeeing, yeah, you'll probably chew through buffers a little bit faster. We're gonna place this approximately where we need it. Like I said, I know it's gonna be a little shy. So I'm gonna have a look at that side. And just walk it around. Yeah, so I'm about a half an inch, maybe not even short. So as far as front to, front to back goes, we're good. We want to make sure our grain is straight. Slide a little bit over still. Perfect. Somewhere around here. This is what I'm going with right here. I'm going to keep the film planted. Peel off this corner. You can start on whatever side you like. And I'm just going to tack it down so the film doesn't move. I'm going to go over there and plant that corner. This way when I go to remove the release liner, the film doesn't shift too much. Now this, as far as glassing out goes, is not going to respond the same way as Avery normally would with the extra layer of laminate put over top. Let's do it. Someone told me that I say that a lot. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Beautiful color. Honestly, this is pretty freaking incredible. Cost that goes into this obviously gets quite expensive with material cost being like, more, it's more than double. The laminate, the laminate actually costs more than the color itself. How crazy is that, right? You can actually, you can actually buy brushed metals, just not in this color, for the same price as the laminate costs on its own. I don't know where the pricing comes from, but hey, to me, it should be cheaper. It's not, I don't make the rules in the industry. Big guys do. All right. We can glass it out. It's not like it's impossible to glass it out. We don't really need to do a whole lot with this. So we just bring it out to the edges slightly. We tack it down on somewhere. Just about that right there. Looking good. We're gonna start squeegeeing. I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna run my squeegee back and forth. Now I don't wanna go side to side. I'll probably burn out my buffer a lot faster. We're gonna come up to the recessed area shortly where those little gills are right somewhere around here. You can see it right about now. We can just press into this area. You're gonna to wanna to use your glove. The air release and everything still works wonderful. Easy. Now with a textured finish, or with the film being so thick, if there are any imperfections in the hood itself, we're gonna see them. Normally I take my glove off, but I'll just leave it on for now. It's funny, the squeegee doesn't really wanna go, when, when you go straight up and down, it doesn't wanna go side to side, it stays like in, in tracks. So I'm gonna stop somewhere around there I don't want to squeeze you too far. I want to make sure that I can take my stretch over the largest area possible. Because we do have a little bit to do. Just going to 
gonna lift the end there. The air was getting trapped. We're gonna come up to that recessed area again, somewhere around here. Just taking my time. There we go. We're gonna go for it. Done. What I'll do afterwards is I'll get in there and I'll post heat. Post heating is very important. It's going to set the adhesive sooner than later. So we run into, we don't run into it um, as much of a chance of it lifting. Let's pop that up because I got air stuck on the edge. So same deal. I don't have as much to stretch on this side as I do the other side. The other side needs a little bit more. That's not a big deal. This one I can probably even do um, without heat. While well, the other side I might need a touch of heat. So we're gonna take it and I, wanna, I don't wanna stretch like where my fingers are. I wanna make sure my fingers are on the outside of where the stretch is happening. If I use my fingers underneath the film and we push too hard, we're gonna cause indentation. You don't want that. The indentation is going to be—it's going to show your hand, your fingerprint, basically underneath the film. What I'm going to do here is cut some of this off. Let's get it elevated easier. Perfect. That's going to allow me to lift right there, give me access, and we'll squeegee the rest out that down locked around the corner for now. I'm going to move over to the other side and finish up the little bit of stretch that I need over there. Now will it be off balance because I'm using a little bit of heat on this side? No, I'm just going to use this again in moderation. I'm going to peel the vinyl back a little bit and I'm going to trim out some of this to give me less resistance from this area right here. Leave that there. back a little bit further. There we go. Doesn't need much, right? Just a percent or so. We can stretch the film, especially I'm stretching it in the direction that it, that it wants to go. If we stretch it the other direction, it ends up, there ends up being a higher chance of it distorting. And by other direction, I mean if we pull it across the grain and not with the grain, then we end up with a chance of distorting the film. It's a lot higher. Amazing. Hood's basically wrapped. We're going to trim it, do all the edges, and then we're done. Trim some of this. Trim a whole bunch of this. And what I'll, tr what I'll do is I'll lift the hood. because it's going to allow me access to the bottom edge. That's my awkward way of cutting, so I'm going to start over here now. I believe when we lift this hood up, the bottom corners drop down, makes it more difficult to access those. Check it out. Hood's already popped. I should just have to do the up here. Oh, it doesn't pop out. Okay, so they don't drop down. I have complete access now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a bottle underneath. It's a nice soft plastic bottle. I have an empty one here. It's going to help elevate the hood and keep everything on the same plane, like same level plane. 
Now I have really good access to get around these corners. Amazing. Oh, it looks really nice. I'm excited to show you guys this when it's all done. When I stretch the corner, I'm pulling in three directions. I'm pulling outward and I'm pulling towards myself. Let's finish this off with heat, give it a trim, and the hood's finished. We test our corners with heat to make sure that it's shrinking down and around before we do any cutting. If it's not shrinking down and around and you get wrinkles afterwards, you're gonna know why. These corners down here are very easy. Same with these. You just, I just mold them around. make sure that I tackle the corner because I want, it to, I want it to turn out as nice as possible so I spend always a little extra time on the corner. Amazing. Let's go check the other one one more time. Interesting, the one over there is, is thicker and a little bit wider than this one here. So this one's a little bit easier on this side. Good. Film's gonna cool slightly as I do this. Switch spots for myself for right now. All right. Trim on the back side. Just poke my blade through, find that sweet spot. This way we're not cutting on any paints. When I trim underneath the corner, I trim literally underneath the corner. This allows me to leave very little film, which in turn makes the corner look nicer when you don't have too much excess film underneath your corners. If you have a lot of excess film in your corners, it, they look, they don't, you're not going to be able to wrap them really nice. So having the correct amount of film is going to help make them a lot nicer. You can actually hear the texture of the film as I cut through it. It's interesting. So that's not every day I get to use this stuff, so I just thought it'd be cool to do a video on it. I keep a little tension on this edge right here, and I pull down. I actually prefer the hood all the way lifted, but I'm just doing this to show you guys. sharpest blade possible right now and it's interesting because you feel you feel the drag from the film you feel it resisting you slightly I 
Excellent. I'll get this off. We're going to go over it with heat and then we're finished. So again, I always focus on the corners a little bit, make sure everything's nice and tight. a couple of stone chips but nothing crazy several passes with heat in your finger I go pretty close just to ensure that everything's locked in really tight tiny bit of air left there see I missed a spot you get it out still perfect When you're heating close range, just make sure there isn't anything else near the heat gun or in the way. You don't want to be burning uh, plastic trims and stuff like that, so keep that in mind. Amazing. Go over this spot. Generally, your post heat temperature is going to be somewhere around 200. A little bit of air left there, too. Glad I went back over it. Awesome. That's the hood wrap. I'm going to give you a quick little run over here. That is a pretty slick finish, I gotta say. A little more air still there. Got it. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. It's gonna look like a brushed metal pearl. That's it guys, I hope this video was informative and helpful. If it was, don't forget to give it a like. If you wanna see more videos, don't forget the subscribe button. If you wanna see the rest of these videos, uh, I'm gonna have them posted somewhere for you in the next little while. Uh, next couple of weeks, I'll have them all up, but I'll have a whole bunch more for you. And I'm definitely gonna show you the finished product as well. Anyways, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Take care.